guys, what's going on? It is Ash here coming at you today in Brawl Stars with Ash. <laughs> Ash, what's up, man? How you doing? Hey, bro, what's up? And uh, thank you so much for having me. It is a pleasure, man. We've both been YouTubing for like, I don't know, half a decade <laughs> or so, to combined almost 10 years, and I've never Feels done a like collaboration, it. so I'm so happy to have you on the channel. You are not only an amazing Brawl Stars YouTuber who is back to consistent uh, full-time YouTube, but also mm -hmm. one of the top players in the game, so it is my honor and privilege to have you on the channel. How are things, man? How, are you excited about Brawl Stars? I'm so excited, it's finally global, and obviously it's a big honor for me to be on your channel as well. I've been obviously a fan of you since like, you know, since Clash of Clans, Clash Royale, everything, like, um, yeah, so it's a big honor. It's really, it's an honor for me to have you, man, and today we're going to be talking about you as really the closest thing there is to a pro, certainly in that conversation <laughs> in the game, are going to give three of your tips to get better at the game immediately. Three things that people should be thinking about when they're playing Brawl Stars. Before we, mm -hmm. we do that, I'd like to throw in a few curveball questions to my guests here, Ash. And I want to ask you, being a top player, what device mm -hmm. do you play on? And do you recommend you know a, a tablet or a phone for this game, or is it just up to the individual? Right, so um, like if you were particularly for me, like I'm a very unique player. And the reason I say that is because I play on a pretty massive device. I play on an iPad Pro 12.9 inch <laughs> screen. Whoa. Uh, and you, you, you will never see anyone playing on a huge screen like this. Like I've been to like, you know, the, the recent event in um, Supercell headquarters. Um, and like one question that I got from like everyone is like, you know, they were just eyeing on my iPad and they're like, how do you play on that thing? And um, it's 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 really, I'd say it's geared towards the player. Um, you should always play with whatever you're comfortable, comfortable with. And I would also say like at least 95% of players do play on their mobile device. And it's probably easier too, because obviously if you're playing on an iPad, you're gonna have to carry that. It's it's kind of heavy. Um, <laughs> but for me, you know, I've always been comfortable as a mobile gamer playing on iPad. So that's why you know it's translated for me from other games such as Clash of Clans, Clash Royale. Uh, Clash of Clans was actually the first game that I played on an iPad was just because it was so like you know so great on the iPad. Sure. And Clash Royale is probably better on mobile, but I you know I, I it just. It just translated for me because you know I just went from um, Clash Clash of Clans to Clash Royale, um, now to Brawl Stars. So I've always been you know an iPad gamer. Yeah, so you just got used to it, and that's interesting. So do you use two hands and just kind of drag and, and yes, whatever? Yes, like that's that's <laughs> another and... very unique thing. Is yeah. Most players they play with their thumbs, right? They move yeah. the joysticks, and that's normal. Like everyone uses their thumbs when they're playing a joystick. But for me, like I use my index finger, like. That is ridiculous, like, for anyone to, like, you know, understand right there. Like, how do you use your index finger to move around your joysticks? Wow. But, you know, I got used to it. Like, I used to be a tapper before um, yeah. they introduced the joystick system. <laughs> so, it yeah, it translated to that well, way as well. Well, hell, man, it's obviously working for you. So, hey, keep doing what you're doing. So, let's <laughs> yeah. get to the tips here. What is your best tip for, or at least your first tip, because you came up with three on your own, uh, okay. <laughs> to, to players to get better immediately. This is geared more towards beginner players. However, we are going to touch on some really advanced pro tips as we go through the conversation. So hit us with the first one, Ash. Okay, so the first one would be you want to try to find an active club. Try to find a club and find players to build chemistry with if you can find teammates you know find try to find like you know new players make friends with them play regularly with them because that's the fastest way you're gonna move up in trophies if you have that advantage of playing with you know uh regular players and that way you can also communicate you can tell them oh, oh th no that wasn't working let's try to adjust and try to change up our strategy and you can do so much that way it's, it's probably the best way to move up in cups that's that's a good that's a good advice obviously and uh once you find or when, when you're looking for a club what should mm -hmm. be the biggest parameters that you're looking for are you looking for an already established group of players that you can learn from people around your own trophy or skill level or right. you know where should you so, try to be yeah so uh one of the biggest tips that i can give you 
is always try to play with players around your level. And the reason for that is because if you, for, for, for instance, say, oh, um, I'm not a very good player and I want to play with someone that's really good so that they can kind of carry me and, you know, I can gain trophies fast. Uh, you might want, you, you're probably thinking that, but that's not how it works. It, it's going to actually like backfire on you because what that's going to do is it's going to increase the difficulty of your games. For example, if you use, say, a 200 trophy Shelly and you have a teammate who's using like a 400 trophy uh, Poco, what the matchmaking is going to do is it's going to focus on uh, the highest trophy teammate, right? So if your teammate, the highest, tro high, highest trophy teammate in your group is the guy with the 400 trophy Poco, you're going to face uh, opponents that are also using high trophy brawlers such as 400, you okay, know. that's all great advice. Cards. And my last question on that first tip to you, uh, Ash, would be, what to look out for in bad teammates, right? And this is kind of an awkward question, uh -huh. but it also is good advice because you don't want to be the bad teammate, right? So right, I, right. I have a guess for you and tell me if this is uh -huh. like the number one thing. I think that it's really dangerous and sometimes it's hard to notice if you have a teammate who's playing aggressive so that they're always giving the opponents right. uh, supercharges, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, so, is there, yeah, go ahead. So the way I combat that is I never, like I would never blame that teammate. If that teammate, if my teammate, right, he's not playing very well, I'm not gonna be like, I'm not gonna discourage him and be like, you know, that was your fault or whatever. My take is you should always, always encourage your teammates Never think of yourself as you're the best player um, in your team. Always try to like encourage them and then also give them tips. Like tell them like, oh, you know, you shouldn't have done that. Let's, um, let's, um, we should have done something else. Uh, let's try to do this next time. Instead of, you know, you going very aggressive like that, try to play more passively, something like that. Encourage them to like, you know, uh, play better ra rather than, Blame them, basically. Yeah, yeah. Don't be a jerk and like just kick somebody right. out, especially yeah. if they're in that your is, club. Yeah. You know, that's the worst thing to do. Like, yeah, I yeah, that is so important because, like I said, chemistry between teammates is so important, and it's not just you carrying the team; it's your whole team. Everyone has to put in the weight in order for you guys to win. So it's just so important okay. to encourage your teammates. Okay, let's go to tip number two. For my second tip, I'd say try to learn how to play with every brawler and also play every game mode because every game mode there's there's a brawler that's you know really good in one mode but not very good in the other mode so it's so important to learn every brawler push every brawler another reason you want to push every brawler is that's the fastest way you're going to push up in cups for example if you just focus on one brawler say cult and you just want to get him to as high as possible and you get him to like 500 cups, but all your other brawlers are like at 100 trophies. You're not gonna move. You're not gonna move up in cups sure. much. You're probably gonna be just what, like 1500 trophy player with a 500 cult, right? Sure. You're not gonna have that experience with other brawlers. You're not gonna move up in trophies. You're not gonna move up in trophy leagues. You're not gonna get those trophy road uh, rewards and so on. Okay, that's really good advice. Do you mind? Like, I don't, I don't expect you to know the best comp for every single game mode right at the top of your head. But do you mm -hmm. mind maybe giving some like really solid comp three uh, brawler comps for each game mode off the top of your head? Sure. So off the top of my head for yeah. gem grab, you always want to have a gem carrier, and the best gem carriers are Pam, Jesse, Penny, Poco. Those are the four best gem carriers. Okay. So. For those brawlers, you want to play the role of mid in gem grab. As for the sides, the best brawlers for those are brawlers that can control those sides or play aggressively. So you have two two forms that you could use for those sides. You could use uh, a brawler that can that is really good at control, such as Rico, Spike. Those are really good at controlling their sides. Um, as for uh, playing aggressively, you can go with Nita, Primo. You can go with uh, even Mortis. Uh, Terra, lots of brawlers that you can play aggressively with on the side, even Daryl. Um, so a, a really good comp for gem grab is combining those three. So you have a mid, say you have Pam, you have a control brawler, say Rico, and or you could also use a thrower such as Barley or Dynamite. And then for your third brawler, you could go with an aggro, aggro style. So like a Primo, Nita. Nita would be a really good one, very easy to use, and she's so good in gem grab. Perfect. So that would be for gem grab. If you want to go, okay, say heist, 
heist, there's so many different comps that you can use nowadays. Like you could just use like three tanks and you could do so well in heist. You could go with Bull, Primo, and Daryl, all three of those brawlers, and you're gonna win a lot of games. Um, however, some some modes for uh, some maps for heist, you definitely want to thrower like such as Safe Zone, Bandit Stash, um, just some maps off the top of my head right mm -hmm. there. Uh, uh, GG Corel. Uh, for those for those maps, you want to throw her such as Barley or Dynamite in your team. And uh, other brawlers that are really good for Heist are Cult, Crow, Spike, Brock. Those are really good uh, support brawlers to have with pretty much any comp in Heist. Okay. Okay, so then we have Bounty. Now, Bounty, there are only few brawlers that are really good. Okay. But that doesn't really mean that, you know, you can't use other brawlers. Like, the best brawlers for Bounty are typically uh, Brock, Piper, Penny, Bo. Those are typically the best ones. The long range. However, yeah, so it's it's a long range game. But however, you can actually make tanks work. Like, um, Daryl is really good in Bounty. It's just that he's just so underrated. Mortis is really good as well. And the reason these brawlers are underrated is because... Um, it requires you to play in a different play style. Uh, for example, obviously, like I said, in order to win Bounty, you not only have to get a kill, you have to be able to escape with that kill. So knowing when to play aggressive with a tank or a Mortis in in Bounty is very important. And the way to develop that is to basically just play a lot and understand how I can you know, get a kill and not die and I can get back and regen. Regening is just so important yeah. in Bounty. Okay, that's uh, great. And, and then the other mode would yeah. be Brawl Ball, Ball, right? Yeah, yeah. So Brawl I Ball, hate Brawl have... Ball, by the way, Ash. I don't know what it is. Like, <laughs> I feel um, like people well, love that game mode, but I, I've, I've never really enjoyed it. It's my like, least favorite. I feel like Brawl Ball is a mode where a, a, a player who who plays a lot of sports would enjoy. For example, if you're if you're like a soccer, if you play if you play a lot of soccer or basketball, football, right? Those sports right they translate the same strategies you could use yeah in brawl ball. triangle offense like, yeah i got you okay. yeah so like playing defense how to you know con like controlling your side so when you're in defending like in basketball you obviously need to control every um the every side of that core right you can't just have oh the left side open if you just there, if there's no defender on that left side you're just gonna let the other person just sprint towards the basket right mm -hmm. so there's a lot of strategies uh, between sport and brawl ball. Um, for brawl ball, I'd say the best brawlers are typically um, best brawlers are Primo, Mortis, yeah. Terra, Nita, Spike, Cult, um, Shelly is pretty good. But yeah, off the top of my head, like those are some really good brawl ball uh, characters that you can use. And one of the best brawler to use for new players is Primo. And the reason for that is because Primo can do it all in Brawl Ball. Yeah. He's got an amazing super that you can use so many ways. Like you can use it aggressively, you can use it for kill, or you can use it to score. Kick it forward, jump on the ball, um, and then you can just easily like you know score because when he jumps on that ball, like other enemies, right? They can't run towards it. Otherwise, they're gonna get stunned and pushed back by his super, allowing him to easily score. Not only that, he has so much hit points. He has the most hit points in the game. So he can just pretty much walk with the ball. That's what makes him such a great ball handler. And having a ball handler in your team is gonna make things so much easier. Um, so brawlers such as a Primo, Mortis, um, are really good ball handlers. Great advice, man. Uh, I think that sums up tip number two. Let's go into the final tip that you have in store for us, Ash. What is it? Okay, so final tip I'd say would probably be try to try to work as a team rather than try to basically do everything on your own. This game is a team game, uh, unless you're obviously playing solo showdown. Um, other than that, it's a team game and you need your teammates to be on the same page as you so that you can be successful um, and win games. You got to work as a team, basically. Yeah, give me some. This is where I want to get into some of the high level strategy, just so mm -hmm. even if people are beginners, they kind of know right. what they're getting into. They know what they should be working on. So give me some high level strategy on how you would approach like a, a gem grab, for example. OK, so basically. Yeah, th this is this is kind of this is this might be a bit advanced for new players because in order to play as a team, it requires you to have that you know that perception of what's going on in the in the field and where I can help 
and where I can be of you know assistance to my uh, teammates. So for example, say uh, you're playing Rico, right, and you're on the right side, and then you have an enemy that's a Primo on the right side. But what that Primo is doing is he's hiding behind that wall, right? So obviously you can't get to that Primo uh, even if you're trying to like bounce your shots. You can't get to him. So what your teammate, your teammate who's at the mid, right? What he needs to do is he needs to have that awareness and be like, oh, you know, my teammate right there, he's struggling to beat that primo on the right because he's hiding behind that wall. So what I should do is I should help out. I should help out by, you know, shooting from the left side while he shoots from the right side. And then we can pinch that primo together and trap him. And when he, when he's trapped, that's going to allow us to get an easy kill, right? Because he can't. There's no escape for him after that trap. And then once we get that kill, we now have a big advantage in the map because we just killed someone, right? So we have a three versus two advantage. And that's how you win games. That's how pros win games is they work together. They find ways to, you know, help their teammates whenever they can and as quickly as can as they can. Because if you're taking way too long, if that if that if you're the mid player and you're you don't realize your teammate needs help right there and you're taking so long, you're not gonna go anywhere. You're not gonna go anywhere. It's gonna give the, the other team a lot of time to work with work their way up and get that control and beat you. Yeah, and that makes that makes total sense. But even to rewind from there a little bit like okay. approaching a match uh you you already mentioned you have two side brawlers and you have a right. uh, a carry who goes in the middle generally speaking mm -hmm. so right. uh when you're on the sides like what would your typical match be looking like like what are you what are you doing right. you know i mean right. this is such a, so, a novice question but yeah give me yeah no, no no that is a really good question because um like for example so you're playing the side and say you're anita right and then you have the enemy who's a spike on the other side, right? And obviously, on, on the same side, I mean. So mm -hmm. obviously, you, you're at a disadvantage because as Anita, you don't have that range to beat the spike, right? Spike does so much damage. He's got more range than you. So how do you? How are you supposed to approach that spike, right? That's, your, that's one of the main um, issues a lot of new players have is they they you know they can't yeah, counter overcome almost. that yeah, yeah, yeah getting countered basically so how do i overcome it so my best tip is try to find ways try to utilize um other you know try to find other ways to be um to be uh you know to to contribute as a member right there uh, rather than you know just try to stall or tr like you know just go aggro against that spike because you're not gonna win if you just run into that spike you're not gonna win so what you could do is instead of going after the spike why not just go after their mid player right so like say they have a mid who's playing poco so if you can't beat spike why not why not you go after their poco instead while staying behind that wall take cover from the spike play smart um so that you don't get shot at by the spike and then just play very aggressive so you could just play very aggressive and you can go after their mid or you could just you know play around the walls try to waste time like waste time for that spike and when you're wasting time because if that spike can't shoot you when you're behind that wall and you're you're wasting time you're what you're doing is you're waiting. You're waiting for the uh, <laughs> an opportune moment to strike against that spike. Or what you can do is you can wait for your teammate on the other side. So this is what something pro players would do. So for example, let's say your teammate is a Brock and he's on the other side. Now Brock is much more accustomed to dealing with the with a spike because he's got the range advantage and it only takes him like uh, two hits with his star power or three hits to kill the spike. He does so much damage. Um, with those rockets so what you can do is you can wait it out and wait for your teammate on the other side to win his side or have your you know mid player support you and then you can switch what you can do is you can do two things you can switch after your teammate on the other side wins his side or you can play very aggressive and try to get as much value as you can by going aggressive against their mid player or if you can get to that spike then you know you should just do it and if you can't win if you lose it's okay it's all right to you know um, lose that side because obviously you you were at a disadvantage and then what you can do is you can switch to the other side after you respawn okay so you would essentially right. just go right behind him and say mm -hmm. okay switch yeah, you know okay time to switch time yeah, to switch yeah that that makes sense uh my but, oh go ahead yeah no uh, but there's a very important um Thing to note there is you don't want to switch immediately you don't want to go oh I'm, i got a spike on my side i can't deal with him right so a bad player what a bad player would do is you know he would just play very very passively right 
and not really do anything. If you're, if you're just staying behind the wall and not doing anything, and you're not going aggressive or anything, then you're wasting a lot, a lot of time. So what you could do is you could just play it aggressively, uh, die right away, and then just switch to the other side rather than just switching immediately. Because if you switch immediately, you're giving the enemy team control. When you go from the right side and you go back and go to the other side, that takes a lot of time. And when you're wasting time like that, it's basically a 3v2 advantage for the enemy and they can push your team back. So yeah, you know, that's don't switch. Don't switch immediately, basically. That's a big no, tip. that's great advice. And even though I'm not even at that level that I'm thinking about that stuff at, at 6K cups <laughs> or whatever I'm at, uh, it's really useful to know what I should be working on and stuff like that. So thank you for that. I, I guess my last question for you, Ash, is is what about... Uh, I think I always have the tendency going into every match, especially if I'm uh, a Jesse or a Pam or a Penny, somebody who has like a uh, spawning a unit or a, or a, a right. heel turret or whatever, you know? I think mm -hmm. I always want to get my super immediately, you know? Like, so right. I tend to play maybe a little bit more aggressive than I should early on because I want to connect mm -hmm. with those shots. How important right. is it to charge your super really early in a match? So it also depends on the mode. So for example, a mode like Brawl Ball, um, super, super, the super battle is very important because, for example, if you're giving the enemy team, um, if you're giving their Terra so many hits and she gets her super immediately, that's just a huge game changer because that she can then just use that super to quickly pull one or two brawlers, kill them, and then that would just grant the other team a very easy um, score. So basically, certain modes, super matters a lot. Other modes, such as gem grab, um, the super battle doesn't matter a whole lot. It's more about control. So even if you're, you know, even if the other player, for example, you know, they get, you know, their super first, it's not always the case that they're going to win the game. Okay. So, so yeah, um, so it so differs. If, right, right, it differs. So, for example, if you're a penny, right, and um, you don't have your mortar, it's taking a while to get that mortar because you're not hitting your shots. It's all right in gem grab. But in a mode such as Bounty, where you have a penny and the other team has a penny, right? Uh, it's so important for you to get your super, your mortar, before their penny gets hurt or her mortar up. And um, the reason for that is because once you have that mortar down on the field, right? You can start to play very passively, very defensively, and not give the other team's penny any hit so she you know she doesn't get her mortar if she doesn't get her mortar they're gonna struggle because now you you kind of have like a four versus three advantage when you add in the unit the the mortar in play right so you have a big advantage there yeah and um yeah in gem grab it's much different you don't have to worry about that if you don't get that mortar just take your time uh build up your super and then you can place it down. And also, don't panic. Like, don't just auto tap that tour. If you have a, if you have a, if you're a penny and you're about to die, don't panic and place it down. If you don't have a good place to place down that mortar in time, then you know it's okay to die. It's okay to die. Get back in play, respawn back, and then have a, a, a better placement for that mortar. So you know you don't just rush it and just throw it right at the middle or somewhere. Yeah, and, and kill it right it. away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sure. Mm -hmm. Well. Dude, I feel like we could talk for a couple hours. You're such a right, wealth of definitely. knowledge. <laughs> but I but I will uh, just go ahead and again and remind all my viewers right now to subscribe to Ash and check out daily, pretty much daily content or close to for Brawl Stars. Uh, looking forward to having you hopefully back on the channel sooner rather than later, man. Hopefully definitely, it won't be another yeah, five years. Let me know. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, thank you again. And uh, any shout outs or anything that, you, that I haven't uh -oh. mentioned that we should? Oh, shout out uh, to my bandmates in uh, Nova Ash. Like, like right before this video, I was like, "Yo, guys, I need some help. I'm doing an interview with Clash with Ash, <laughs> and I need some like I need some quick, um, quick, you know, tips for for new players because you know I, I was afraid I might miss something. So they were, you know, they were very kind to help me out. That's there. awesome, so, man. Big shout out to my bandmates. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for coming on again. A huge shout out to you and to your Nova Ash. Uh, I keep getting, I keep wanting to say band, but club, yeah, right? No. Uh, yeah, shout out to your club, club bro. bro. I even called it a band. I've been, yeah, I've been calling it a band like yeah, yeah. forever. Let's go clubbing. All right, <laughs> okay. Ash. Thanks again for coming on, man. No I appreciate problem. it. All of Ash's information, guys, will be in the show notes in the description as always. Thank you so much for watching all the way till the end. I really appreciate it. Huge shout out to Brent Strong and my YouTube partner. Check out his information in the description as well. Thank you guys. And as always, take care. Guys. Later. <laughs>